Shalom. Today we're going to continue investigating the parallels between the five scrolls and the five books of Moses. We're going to start with the book of Esther. In thinking about how to pair these things up, I just looked over the theme book. I felt like the books should appear in the chronological order in which we celebrate those festivals when we read the Chamesh Megillah. So the question was, which one to put first? And I think as we go along, you'll see that the themes line up nicely with this arrangement. Even though Esther is sort of the last festival of the year before Passover, it most closely parallels the book of Genesis. The first thing we will look at is the echoes of creation. It is said that before the world was created, God had nothing to really be king over. This is something that we celebrate when we celebrate trumpets and in a more traditional celebration of Rosh Hashanah, that king cannot be crowned until he has a, a kingdom to rule over. So at the beginning of creation is when we can see Yahweh in his position as king. Similarly, the book of Esther opens up telling us about the king of the known world at the time. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over 127 provinces. Very shortly, we see a picture of seven days. There, are, of course, is a big feast going on for a half a year. But afterwards, there is another period of seven days uh, laid out in Ahasuerus' palace from Esther 1.5. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. A very important concept throughout the Bible is that of the third day. In order to understand the third day, we need to go back to the third day of creation when the waters were gathered together, the dry land appeared, and then we see that the grass, the herbs of the field, appeared. It nowhere says that they were created, but rather they appeared. And so this is a picture of the potential of what is about to happen. Some, the groundwork has already been laid when something is about to happen the truth of that will manifest on the third day. And so we see that in Esther 5.1. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, over against the gate of the house. And we know this is one of the pivotal points in the story. Will she be accepted? Will she be received? Or will she be put to death? Another thing we see in, in the early parts of Genesis is about the 10th month, talking about Noah, Genesis 8.5, and the waters decrease continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. And likewise in Esther, we're going to see that in the same month, Esther is seen in chapter 2, verse 16. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his royal para, palace, in the tenth month, which is the month of Tevet, in the seventh year of his reign. The tenth month is not mentioned in any other of the five books of Moses. Next we're going to examine the echoes of Abraham as they appear in Esther. As we have seen already, the first person we're introduced to is the king, and he's very wealthy, and it describes all his riches. In Genesis 13:2. It says, and Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Again, in a parallel form, we see that Abraham is taking care of his nephew Lot. Genesis 12, 5. And Abram took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. Just as Mordechai is taking care of his niece, Lot is taking care of his nephew. In both stories, we see that one wife must be put aside. We know in the story of Esther that it is the current queen, Vashti. Esther is going to take her place. In Genesis 21, 12, 
Wherefore she said unto Abram, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Another interesting tie between the two stories is the number 127. Genesis 23, 1. And Sarah was 127 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. Esther 1, 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over a hundred and seven and twenty provinces. One would wonder why this peculiar number appears uh, in both stories, aside from the fact that they represent the truth of the matter. Sarah lived that long, and Ahasuerus ruled over that many provinces. There are actually 127 days from Shavuot to Sukkot. And so we have a picture of complete marriage. The, in Shavuot, we know we received the ketubah, the Ten Sayings, the Ten Commandments. This is our initial covenant, and we are considered to be espoused to our groom. But there is actually no wedding and no dwelling with until Sukkot, the tabernacling. And so we see both women, Sarah and Esther, were very beautiful, and they're in these marriages. And so it reminds us to think on these two things together when we come to this number. Another interesting fact is that Abraham, in the battle with the five kings, does not take any plunder. In Genesis 14, 23, and 24, that I will not take from the a thread, even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say, I have made Abram rich, save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamri. Let them take their portion. But Abraham takes no plunder from this battle with the kings where he went to rescue his nephew Lot. And interestingly, also in Esther, during the fight that the Jews put up against the Persians in Adar, where they were allowed to save their own lives, they take no plunder either. In Esther 9.10, the ten sons of Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, slew they, but on the spoil laid not their hand. Just an interesting comparison. Next time we'll go on to the main event of the comparison of these two books. In the meantime, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.